Hi, my name is uh, Jem Gary. I'm one of you guys, a Colombian. I'm a civil engineering student here at Columbia University I'm in my final semester. And uh, it's really a great pleasure to be here. When I first learned that the day's topic was commitment, I immediately remembered the three steps that constitute a simple thought process, the why, the how, and the what. Usually speaking, in our everyday activities in New York, and we like to live fast, right? We tend to jump straight to the what, right there, which is a, rather a direct implementation of an idea. But committed people usually start from thinking about the why, which is the larger human narrative in play. Because if the why is strong enough, and if the why is driving enough, and the why is compelling and challenging enough, one can actually start committing and con continue to stay committed. And so this is what we will be focusing on today. We'll be focusing on starting with the why. I'd like to share a story of one of my commitments, one of my beliefs, something that I uh, grew into and the journey in which this belief and this commitment took me until this far. I'm originally from Istanbul, Turkey, where I lived all my life until I traveled to New York in 2010 to start my education career here at Columbia. And uh, in 2011, which was my freshman summer year, me and a dear friend of mine, Kerem Kamishli, decided to spend our four month summer a bit more productively. So we decided to speak to a couple of people, most of them who were business leaders in Turkey, very accomplished individuals, but some of them who were not so lucky to become or emerge as business leaders in their respective fields. Our aim in going to these meetings and spending such a time or investing such a time was basically gaining insight onto how it all works in the outside world and what it took to be successful. And uh, you're gonna see some of these photos from our meetings as we go on forward from here. So our immediate conclusion from our meetings, the recipe for success was that one has to be talented, courageous, and committed in order to become successful. But even more important than the recipe for success, our eyes were open to the large number of people who were extremely talented, who were extremely courageous, and they were committed as well. Nevertheless, they simply lacked unfortunately speaking, certain opportunities that will allow them to fulfill their potential and climb the ladders of life. And, and this realization has really uh, changed the way I operate because I saw that the fact that these people cannot emerge as leaders hinders their chances to bring about added value to the society overall. The opportunity costs were just humongous. And, uh, and really our research proved that Turkey is a dynamic nation of 80 million people the population is expected to be 100 million people by 2025. We've heard about Turkey's economic growth in the past 10 years, and it's true that the country is growing. Well. Nevertheless, friction and unemployment is a very big problem. And as the population will continue to rise, this problem is only expected to become larger. So, what was our realization? We realized that our country needed new leaders who would bring about larger opportunities for the community overall. Nevertheless, there was no mechanism in Turkey that effectively fostered or supported the emergence of leaders. I mean, there were some that did not support the people who came from underprivileged backgrounds, but it didn't. So me and my partner, we have we developed a belief and commitment that we should try and close this gap. This might all sound a bit too ideological to you, and I personally do appreciate the fact that we are not all dealt the same cards in life. Nevertheless, we can still attempt to level the playing field as much as possible, and by doing so, we can contribute to our economies and societies, if we can contribute to the creation or the crafting of the next generation of leaders. So with this belief, with this goal, let's say, our journey began. One year later, in July 2012, my partner Kerem, I, and 20 other successful Turkish university students were involved in the foundation of our non-profit association, Yeni Bir Lider. The meaning of Yeni Bir Lider is literally a new leader in Turkish. It's really simple. At our inception, our association became the first and only uh, non-profit in Turkey to have its managerial team, to have its members and executive board consist of people exclusively younger than 25 years of age. So we chose a motto that was also motivating. It was for the youth, by the youth, in Ibi Lider. 
Uh, currently, we have about 70 people involved, and all of them are still under the age of 28, because two years have passed. So, at our inception, our activities span to include a number of panels, seminars, conferences, inter interviews with business leaders, and also internships geared towards successful university students in Turkey. One of our major accomplishments in our first year of operations was that 12 of the interviews that we were able to conduct with business leaders were adopted and published by the nation's leading newspaper, Hurriyet. So for the, month of, for the duration of three months, anyone who opened the newspaper Hurriyet could see our articles there. And we're gonna see them now here as we go. The aim of this effort was really in the summer of 2011, me and my partner gained really valuable insight by talking to all of these business leaders. We thought if we were able to gain this information and share it with a larger audience to a media outlet, we could possibly uh, contribute to others as well. Another major achievement was being able to offer, uh, it's not an achievement, let's say a milestone. Another milestone was being able to offer 125 successful university students the opportunity to engage in highly structured summer internships in a variety of leading Turkish corporations in the summer of 2013. So last summer, uh, in July, we had 125 students from all around Turkey come together and go to Moscow, to Russia, to Iraq, to Europe, to Istanbul, and all around Turkey. Some of these students had never left the proximities of their villages and of their towns, and taking them out of there and putting them in an incredibly different environment had very interesting results, to say the least. One of the most motivating results that uh, we encountered was 35% of these interns received full-time job offers from the companies they interned with. And this, in terms of really proved the worthiness of the opportunity granted to them. I was very motivated and happy to see this. All in all, in our first year of activities, through uh, a variety of things, we were able to reach 120 thousand Turkish students and young people and um, as we go forward I'm going to show some of the photos of our organizations and okay we also published a book called uh, leadership lessons from CEOs and management tips from CEOs it was published via correlation with a local Turkish business magazine and it was distributed to around 25,000 people Yes, we were indeed able to reach a significant number of people. Nevertheless, the impact of each one of these people were really minimal. If we were talking about developing leaders, we understood and realized that we should focus our efforts and our resources on a smaller, more exclusive group and uh, drastically improve our touch within these people. From here on, we pivoted and we started formulating our new model, which we believe will revolutionize the initial development of Turkey. This model uh, simply is structured to work in three steps. The discovery phase, where we sought out to find the future leaders. The development phase, where all of these future leaders are presented a year long of opportunities where they're fostered and supported. And an ecosystem phase, where everyone who participates in, this, in these activities then go on to support him and inspire each other as friends for the long term. I'm going to explain that more. So, in our model, in our discovery phase, we start by uh, partnering up with some of the best companies in Turkey. These companies uh, are a variety of leading companies, some of which you might have heard, like Vodafone, Instagram, and David Fund, Ford Motor Company. These companies that we partnered up with uh, are really our strategic partners and our partner companies. Once we found our partner companies, we move on to the three major groups that we execute our model that we have in mind. Executive mentors, about 40 of them. The young professionals, about 60 of them. And students, about 150 of them. Young professionals also come from our partner companies, and we are really the rising star young professionals in these variety of companies. They are chosen by the executive mentors and stuff. And the students, about 150 of them, are chosen from among the best university students from all around Turkey who have very strong credentials in terms of academic excellence, but also practical experience. So, after the successful completion of the study phase, everyone moves into the development phase. In the development phase, I believe that we offer really valuable uh, opportunities, such as seminars, leadership camps, 
mentorship and coaching for everyone participating. The seminars and the leadership camps are usually uh, executed when the executive members come and share their life stories, but with a special emphasis on their mistakes and their failures, because we believe that these mistakes and failures are some of the most important life lessons to learn. Once these are completed, we send our students to summer internships at our partner companies, and this culminates to the development phase. After all this is complete, all of our students, all of our executive mentors and young professionals proceed to the ecosystem phase. This is an exclusive network of individuals where they get together from time to time, and uh, they also stay in touch with our own online tools. Um, unfortunately, not Twitter. So, I believe that the ecosystem phase is the most important out of all because here we already selected successful people of different ages, different backgrounds, different career paths, different aspirations, come together and inspire and support each other for the long run as friends, mentors, co workers, family, I don't know. And this is really important. Because you and me, all of us, characteristically speaking, are the basic combination of the five people that are closest to us. So, all in all, some patterns inherently emerge in our ecosystem. First of all, we see a chain of support from the top to the bottom with each link to the next one. We see the executive mentors pulling out the young professionals, the young mentorship, and we see the young professionals pulling the students out of the young mentorships. We see interaction among each participant level. And this is really crucial because, again, we operate with a simple belief. We believe that every one of us need access to three kinds of people at all times. One, people who are more successful than us to learn from. People who are at equal level of success and knowledge to share ideas with. And people who are subordinate to us in terms of their experience and knowledge to basically teach to and stay, stay energized while doing so. <clears throat> a final important aspect of our ecosystem is hidden within the, within, the, uh, within the final sustaining phase. And this is, we believe that the alumni who graduate from our ecosystem and emerging as leaders in the years to come will later on become our major supporters and advocators if they become leaders. All in all, uh, this is our first year of activities and we shall see how it plays out. But going back to the beginning, as we first started our, uh, our journey, I had major opposition. I had friends come to me and, and tell me, Jem, what have you achieved personally that you're attempting to teach others how to become leaders? And they were right, I, I didn't do much. But I want to reiterate what I told them. We have no intention of teaching leadership. It's doubtful then that leadership can be taught in the first place. We are merely aiming to find already talented future leaders and providing them with certain opportunities that would allow them to build up their skills, experiences and networks. In the end of the day, if they are to become leaders, they'll become leaders based on their own merits. All in all, if this model proves to be successful in Turkey, and this is the pipeline dream, what I really want to communicate today, we believe that it could be exported elsewhere to other developing nations to promote leaders there as well. And if this dream is to become a reality, we, perhaps as the luckier ones, and I think we can all consider ourselves lucky to be here today, should take a part and should work together on this collective effort. We're committed to the supporting and emergence of leaders, and we wake up every morning so that this model can actually yield and craft the next generation of leaders, and in the process, bring about added value for society. If I go back to the golden circle that I started with, the what, the how, and the why, those who start with and focus on the why are those who are able to commit. We started by focusing on our why, and we have had a uh, great run thus far. Um, we shall all see where this journey shall take us from here on. Thank you. Thanks a lot.